Introducing my latest creation, the nominal thickness tool setting gauge. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. You know for years I've been asked why don't I use a touch off plate when setting my cutters on the CNC. Now let's face it, they're not rocket science to build, really easy. Uh, piece of aluminium like this here, any piece of metal will do. Run a wire from your controller, connect them together and hey presto, you've got a touch off plate that will accurately and easily set your cutter each and every time you use it. Problem is, it doesn't suit my style of machining. Now I'm somewhat notorious in that during a cut, I may set my cutter to the surface of the stock, and sometimes I set it reference to my spoil board, and I will change that throughout the cut as well. So, one of these touch-off plates won't work for me. Well, technically speaking, yes it can. I could use it if I wanted. Problem is, when I set it to the surface of my stock, no worries at all. When I set it to the surface of my spoil board, I've got to then perform a calculation. If I'm trying to convince other people to use this method, then it's not going to happen. To be honest, even I don't want to do it that way. It's uh, having to work out a calculation each and every time I set it to my spoil board will drive me around the twist. So that's just not going to work. What I really need is a touch-off plate that works in uh, multiple locations, both on the surface of my stock and on the spoil board. So over the Christmas New Year break, I sat down and had a think about it. Was there a way I could have the best of both worlds? And it turns out, yes there is. I came up with this little idea. I call it the nominal thickness tool setting gauge. This will allow me to sit it on the stock, touch off, and it will automatically set my cutter to zero. If I set it down onto the spoil board, I can touch off on this as well, and it will automatically set my cutter to zero, referenced from the spoil board. The best thing of all is I don't need to make any changes in Mac 3, UCNC, Linux CNC, or whatever software you use to control your machine. It will work with all of them. You just simply use the same macros you've always used for a tool setter. You just simply use this gauge. So, let's have a bit more of an in-depth look at it. Before we have a look at the tool setter, let's understand what the problem is with conventional tool setting. So, here we have a piece of 12mm plywood. And over here, some 18 millimeter MDF. Now these are sold as nominal thicknesses. Basically what it means is whatever measurement they told me it was in the shop, it won't be. So it's very unlikely this is actually 12 millimeters thick. And if I get out my calipers and measure it, depending on where I go around and measure it from, it's going to give me different measurements. Plus it's wood, it swells, so today it might measure this much and tomorrow it'll measure that much. There won't be much of a difference, but nonetheless, it's different. So in the ideal world, my 12 millimeter plywood would be 12 millimeters thick. And I'm gonna cut a shape out of my 12 millimeter piece here. So I come along and I set my cutter down to the surface of my stock and say Z equals zero. Now I start machining my shape. The G-code is going to start from Z0 and it's going to work its way down. When it gets down to the spoil board here, it will be at a height of Z equals minus 12. At that point in time, the cutter will just be skimming the surface of the spoil board here and my material will have been cut all the way through. Now this is not the ideal world. The reality is this could be 13 millimeters could be 11 millimeters. So let's look at those scenarios. I set my cut of the surface of the, spoil, of the stock here, tell it you're at Z0, and my material is actually 13 millimeters thick. Well, it's only going to cut 
12 millimeters into this here, it won't get all the way through. Now, in the second scenario, my 12 millimeter stock is actually 11 millimeters thick. I again set the cutter to the surface of the stock here, say you're at Z0. I now cut 12 millimeters down. I'm actually cutting a millimeter into my spoil board. The same applies to MDF. It also is a nominal thickness and it's roughly 18 millimeters thick. Could be more, could be less. So depending on which it is, I'm either going to not cut all the way through it or I'm going to cut into the top of my spoil board. So to fix this problem, I do a workaround. If I'm cutting something and I need it accurately uh, reference to the surface of the material, let's say I am doing some V carving, I want to set my cutter to the surface of my stock here and I'll V carve into it and that way my V carving will look right. But when it comes time to cut all the way through the material here, I cheat. I know the G code will say if I'm cutting through some 12 millimeter stock, when the cut is complete, my cutter will be at Z equals minus 12. So instead of setting the cutter to the surface of the stock, I bring it down to my spoil board here, and I say you are now at Z equals minus 12. So when it starts cutting the shape out, it will skim the surface of the material of the, stock, of the spoil board here and cut exactly through my stock. That means that my very first cut here will either be maybe fractionally deeper than it should be or fractionally shallower than it should be. It doesn't matter. What's important is when we cut through, it's correct with reference to the table here. It doesn't damage my table, but does manage to cut all the way through the stock. And that's what my nominal thickness gauge is here to fix. So now that we understand the issues involved with using standard tool setters, Let's see how my nominal thickness gauge will resolve them. So first off, if I want to do some V-carving down on my piece of 12mm stock, I can take the nominal tool thickness gauge here, and I have a setting here of zero. That will allow me to zero the cutter with respect to the surface. I hit the auto zero feature. The cutter will descend down to the plate, touch off, rise up a little bit, touch off again, and set itself to the specified height. Now, if I tell it to go to using an MDI command Z0, the cutter will descend and sit right on the surface of the stock there. It's nicely pinning it to the spoil board. And that's what you get with a standard gauge, uh, tool setting gauge. So, Next, I want to, after I finish my V-carve, I want to cut around this here and cut it out. So what I do is I can take the nominal tool, nominal thickness gauge here, and I'm going to take it over to the 12mm block here, and I'm going to perform exactly the same thing again. I'm just going to go auto zero. Again, the cutter will descend down to the gauge, touch off, descend again, touch off again. Now if I tell it to go to the origin point, you can see it's gone back and sat on the surface of the material. This time though, it's actually just binding on this material and no more because this stock is slightly thicker than 12 millimeters. What I'll do is I'll simply bring the cutter over here and use the MDI command Z minus 12. And when I do that, the cutter comes down and sits perfectly on the surface of the spoil board. So when it cuts through, it won't damage the spoil board, but it will cut entirely through my material. Now we can do the same for a piece of MDF stock. The nominal thickness of this is 18 millimeters. I'm going to bring in the nominal thickness gauge here. I'm going to do an auto zero on it. I'm going to use the zero step on this here because I want to zero it to the surface of 
my stock. If I now do a return to the origin point, the cutter descends down to the surface of the material and it's nicely held in place. But the cutter's not cutting it, so it's right down on the surface of the board, exactly where you want it. Now imagine having done my V carving, I now wish to cut this out. Since I'm using 18mm stock, I'm going to use the 18mm step on the nominal thickness gauge here. Again, I jog over to where the gauge is and hit auto zero. Now if I tell it to return to the origin point, it's gone back here, sitting on the surface of the board here. But because this board is actually a little bit thicker than 18 millimeters, you can see a wee whisker of MDF being cut when I rotate the cutter. But if I come back over here and enter the MDI command Z minus 18, again the cutter descends to the surface of the spoil board and it will allow me to cut right through this material without damaging the spoil board but completely cutting my stock. So as you can see this here makes setting the tool really easy. Now of course there are only six steps on this here. I've got 0, 3, 6, 9, 12 and 18. If this was an imperial version it would be 0, an eighth, a quarter, three eighth, a half and three quarter inch settings. But there are actually two standard thicknesses missing here for New Zealand anyway and that's uh, 4.75 and 16 millimeters in MDF and um, that would be the equivalent of 3 16th and 5 8 in the US. If I was to add another row to this here to include those two I'd probably add a third one of 22 millimeters the equivalent of 7 8 and that would give a really good spread of nominal thicknesses for, to use with this gauge. Now, of course, if I was to use this gauge and machine 16mm, which doesn't appear, I've got several options up my sleeve. The easiest of which is I just return to setting the cutter manually uh, when I want to reference it to the spoil board, and I can use the uh, zero to set it to the surface of the material. Likewise, if in your day-to-day -day machining you simply always machine everything reference to the surface of the material, well, you just do that in that particular instance, and you're no worse off than you were before using a gauge like this. So there you have it, the uh, nominal thickness tool setting gauge. Tell me what you think. Leave a comment in the uh, below this video. Tell me your thoughts on it. You reckon uh, it would make your life a lot easier machining? Make it more efficient? Or maybe it's a waste of time? I'd be interested to know your thoughts. Well, that about wraps it up for this week. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out my website www.cncnuts.com If you click the link below this video, you'll be taken to the write-up associated with this particular video. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.